Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching CSS for Beginners Lesson 45 and today we're going to take a look at the background shorthand property. Yeah. Alright guys, so in the last lesson I showed you these different background properties. The background colour, the background image, background repeat, background position and background size. Now, I'm going to show you the shorthand version of this so that we can combine a few of these properties into one property. And there's many different ways of doing this. I'm going to show you the way that I like to work and then you can take from it what you will, uh, go off and research yourself and then kind of adapt it to your workflow. So the way I like to do this is by specifying the background image properties within the background shorthand. So I'm going to delete all of these here. First of all, I'll copy this and then delete all these. Oops. And what we'll do is just write background for our property. That's it, okay? And then we're gonna write multiple values within this one property. And the first thing we wanna say is that we wanna supply an image. So we'll do that by writing URL, then our parentheses, and then paste our image in there, okay? Now, the next thing we want to do is say that we don't want this to repeat. So we'd write no repeat. The third thing we want to do is specify that we want this to be in the top center and then that's all I do in the background shorthand property. I write the URL first for the background image. I write the no repeat uh, property or repeat or space depending on what I want to do with the image. I write that second. Third, I write the, uh, the top or the um, whichever kind of coordinate I want and then fourth, the center, or whichever other coordinate I want. So that's all there is to it, okay? Again, you can kind of adapt this to how you want. There are other ways of doing the shorthand version, uh, and it's all gonna be on the Mozilla website. I'll link to that down here below so you can read that yourselves. What I would say is that I would always put your background color property separately if you have images, and I'd put it underneath the background shorthand property. And the reason that is, is because First of all, if we put this up here above the background property, then we'd first of all, we'd apply the background color. And then underneath that, when it reaches this rule here, it's going to override that color and it will no longer be there. This way, we're going to supply the background images how we want them. And then underneath, we're going to supply a background color, which isn't going to override this, but it still will provide a background color. So I'd always do that. And then the second thing is I'd always specify the background size out here. You can do it in the shorthand up here, but it becomes a little bit confusing and it's a little bit more limited, I think. So I'd always supply this separately. So if you want to give it a width of 200 pixels, I'd do that here. So this here, these three rules, is exactly the same as writing the six rules that we did in the previous lesson. So let's just save that and view it in a browser. There we go guys, exactly the same. So that's all there is to it. Uh, that's the background shorthand property. Use it however you like. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Otherwise, if you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe or share and I'll see you guys in the next one.